Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. Michael, how are you? Doing great. There's no long form of Mark. I can't answer. But, uh, doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you. We got the dude buddy, the nightcap OG, your nightcap partner in crime, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. Glad to be here. <clears throat> Good to see you. Good to see you. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson, sans a rib falling out of his mouth. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Good to see you. Last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are things in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida? Uh, it's great. How are you? It's great. Um, Eric and I were talking, by the way, we will be coming out. And um, I don't think you know this or not, but you will be scuba diving Key Largo with us. Uh, I won't be scuba diving. But, Anyways, uh, we got a great topic, Scott. I don't want, we don't want to hear no. So yeah, okay. we want to talk about what are our routines that we are, that we get into, into our, our work mode, um, routines, habits, you know, when we start sort of working in, in the business, Mike, is this, is this the topic? Am I saying it right? I think so. It's like, how do we maybe get in the right headspace so that we can be productive? Is there any daily routines? I think that's what you're saying, right? Daily routines, right. Scott, is that is that a good topic, Bossman? Because Todd, Scott Todd's already being irascible with the whole Scooby thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, we'll all have some good things to say, and then we'll get around to Scott. He might be a little bit cynical about it, but he'll talk about donuts, that type of thing. <laughs> but it, it'll be fun. I, yeah, yeah. Wow. I see, I see where this is going. Off. I see. This is not listen. starting off well. Uh, oh, man. You see, th this is what happens in the last podcast. I challenged Mark's tip of the week. And next thing you know, the Mark Army has come to attack me. The boss man, Zeno. The Mark Eric Army. really chimed in here. He's staying neutral. That's what he did last time. So the thing is, like, I see how this rolls, guys. Don't worry. Just because the last episode was so grateful that it's like we all this gratefulness just came out. So now we're like swinging the pendulum the other way. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. We, I, I know. I know how this podcast. I'm not a Makami member. It, I'm team neutral. He doesn't like neutral. You got to be team Scott. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that. Like. I'm certainly not anti Scott. I've been there once and it didn't work out well. So I'm team neutral. So, okay. All right. No problem. I see. I, Bossman, I can see Bossman's loyalty right there. I got you. I got you, Bossman. Don't worry. S Scott Bossman, I'll be sending you a team hashtag, hashtag team mark shirt later this afternoon. Nice. Right. Um, anyways, let's go on with our, our topic. So, Zen Master. Yes, I'm sure you have some routines, some habits. What is it that you like to do to start your day? You know, like that, that uh, the miracle morning, that hell, El, the hell, 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 Rod book. <laughs> what do you do to get into a good productive mindset to start running your land business? Oh, okay. So of late, my morning routine uh, is consists of, I wake up in the morning and I do jump right on the Peloton. I don't think I've, I don't think y'all know that I joined Peloton uh, team a while back now. I've already hit my hundred run uh, uh, rides and and whatnot. So I uh, I do a quick Peloton. That's how I wake up. Uh, then I do some deep breathing, a la Wim Hof. And I told you, Mark, I now have uh, my ice bucket. And since it's uh, I got it this time of year, about about two weeks ago. It's uh, so outside. It's really cold out. So my neighbors probably think I'm very strange. I go out there and I just hop into my ice bucket for three minutes. And then I go into the hot tub of three minutes on the ice bucket and I go back and forth a few times. Then uh, in, I also do a little, uh, a little ritual where I think about, you know, how I want to, you know, say nice things today, do good things today, have a clear head. And, and then I, and uh, you know, about 11 o'clock that's all done and uh, I'm ready to roll. Wow. That's a phenomenal beginning. Uh, I will say that for those of you who are rolling your eyes about the ice bath, um, 
there was there's actually been a study done that it does increase your dopamine levels and it and it keeps growing throughout the day so yeah. um it's it's really a very you told uh, me that so now i end on the ice i used to end on the hut mark but after you said that i end on the ice and i'll tell you it makes a huge difference it just car that feeling just it carries it's got some serious uh holdings power yeah absolutely so when i take my hot, my cold shower i'll start cold uh, then i'll go hot and i'll end it cold right and uh and i feel great and i have a, a you know a phenomenal mood throughout the day as opposed to say someone else might be on this podcast not not naming names but they might be in maybe a sugar crash mode well no, you know, no comment from mike i'm going on mute like we're, we're getting more energy so um scott bossman what routines, habits do you like to engage in? Routines and habits. Well, in the mornings, I spend a little time with the boys before they uh, get out the door, uh, have some coffee, try to talk to the adolescents in, in the house and, and uh, get a little bit of uh, information out of them in the morning. That's pretty difficult, actually. Um, they're pretty quiet and they don't like to talk. But anyway, I spend a little time uh, with the boys and then... Um, after some reading, I typically do like to read a little bit in the morning. I, I try to uh, get my thoughts in, in um, order for the day. Um, something I've been doing recently, which uh, I think has been helping me, was uh, I, I reread, I read it a long time ago, uh, Seven Habits of, uh, uh, by Stephen, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I've been using the quadrant lately, uh, put things first, put first things first. And uh, he organizes things in your life by quadrants. And anyway, you're supposed to spend time in quadrant two, which is the not urgent, but important things in your life. And, the, and those things in your life uh, enhance your long-term development. They enhance your goal setting and your, and uh, hitting your goals and that type of thing. So I focus on what I'm going to focus on that day in quadrant two. And then I've kind of gotten the habit, Mark, you know, I used to work kind of, uh, I used to work long hours all day long, no breaks. So I'm in the habit of sitting down for a half hour to an hour and focusing on something, and then I'll take a break. So whether it's reading a book or getting on the Peloton or getting on the tonal, uh, or whatnot, uh, working out, I am working out six days a week, um, trying to read a book a week and those things, I think are helping me just be overall uh, productive. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, between you and, and Mike, um, I am, and this is, if you're listening to this right now, you might be feeling like me where comparison is the thief of happiness. Don't worry about it. You, you got to do the best with what you got. Everyone's got a different life. So, you know, don't go there. As long as you have one or two, really good habits you can build from there. So hopefully Eric Peterson's habits aren't as ambitious. Maybe he starts his day with, uh, you know, something like a comic book. I read comic books. Nothing wrong with a comic Peloton. book. Absolutely. But it's, it's certainly not tonal Peloton, you know, Stephen Covey, first things first. All right. Wow. So... <laughs> I like to get up early before everyone else in the house. Um, that's when I do my exercise. Uh, so that's, that's kind of first for me. And, and that way by doing it first, it helps me get it done, honestly. So um, then usually sometime after that, the kids are up and uh, get them ready for school. I'll take them to school. Uh, usually before I take them to school though, I do go for a walk, a short walk in the morning with the dog. Um, after I take them to school, I'll come back and find my way up to the office. And typically the first thing I'll do is, is just sit down and, and think about what needs to be accomplished for that given day. Um, I might write a little list if I need to, or I'll just mentally go through it and then, you know, kind of get started on those things. And, um, as the day progresses, I might run some errands. I might grab some lunch. It just depends, but uh, pretty consistently in the morning after the kids are at school, I'm coming to my office and, and, you know, getting started on the day. 
What time is that usually? Uh, that's about 8.30-ish. I'm, okay. I'm up in the office getting started. I, I typically get up around five, do my exercise and all that. That's a, that's a, that's a great morning exercise. Take care of yourself first, be with the, the family, then do something a little fun and off to work. Um, I'm afraid to ask Scott Todd about his morning routine because I'm afraid he's going to go on a, on a, <laughs> a tangent about me picking on him on this podcast. No, it, it, no, no one's picking on anybody. I just see, I see. And the, the Mark, the, um, you know, I think that for, for me, what I'll do is I'll wake up and, um, I do, I have a routine. I head out, I get some, some drinks for myself. I get a diet Coke. I, I yes, I can drink it at home. Uh, but I prefer to go, I prefer to go get one fountain drink. It's my little, uh, treat for myself gets me out of the house. And, um, Sometimes I will sit there in the parking lot, drinking my drink, eating my donut. That's true. Um, which I don't suffer a sugar crash anytime during the day, by the way. Um, but the thing is, is like, while I'm there, um, I will go through. And one of the things that I've been really, really good about for a very long time is really kind of looking at kind of the emails that I had sent the day before the work that I did the day before and thinking about, is that something that I really need to be involved with or, or not? And like in the last podcast, for example, I talked about thinking like the CEO and, and, you know, protecting your time and watching it for, are you now the IT support person? So as you start to think about the work that you did the, the, the day before, I think what happens is you start to realize that you're doing stuff that either you're justifying doing to, to, to justify yourself working or you really love the work. And if you love the work, no problem. And if you're having fun with that component, no problem. But oftentimes we end up just, you know, swooping in to answer a question and we're doing work that's not providing value to the company. And if you can really protect that time and be the creator of uh, the protector of the time, then I think that that will allow you one to move your business further faster. And at the same time, I think that what it will do is it will, um, um, allow you to protect, you know, that time and growth so that you can, you can enjoy time while you're making the money, right? Like it's the, that's the thing is it's a balance. So one of the things I religiously do is I always start to question the work that I'm doing or the work that I did the day before and try to re-justify to myself, why did I handle that that way? Why did I do it that way? Because um, I want to basically commit to myself that I only should be doing the stuff that I absolutely need to do or I absolutely want to do. I, I love the daily mindfulness of it, where you do sort of this autopsy of where you spent your time. And was it on activities that were productive? Were they CEO activities? Were they you know, $10 an hour activities? Were they $50 an hour activities? Um, and having that mindfulness and, and doing that aut autopsy makes the next day so much more productive because then you don't make th the same mistake again or, or you fall into the bad habit, what Chris you know, Ducker would call Superman syndrome. Like it, it feels good for your ego when your VA reaches out to you, asks a question and you come in and you save the day and you give them the answer, but Ultimately, what you're training them to do is to have you keep solving their problem. There's a great Harvard Business Review article also called um, Who's Got the Monkey? So any kind of problem would then be, okay, now the monkey's on my back, as opposed to, you know, you got to hand that monkey back to the person in charge. And it's not easy, right, Scott Todd? It does take a certain amount of discipline and mindfulness. Yeah, I think the thing is, is like, like you said, um, you know, we, we want to feel needed in our businesses, but at the same time, what that is doing is it's, it's causing work justification. We feel like we have to answer these questions. We feel like we have to do it because if we don't, then we start to feel guilty that maybe I'm not working or I'm not, you know, moving the business far enough. It's funny because 
there were some people that you and I work with um, on, on a project and on a given Friday where I wasn't in the office, I don't think you were in the office. I wasn't working on this given Friday. We get a Vox from this person who said, Hey man, we're over here. It's like, I don't know. It seemed like it was like three o'clock in the afternoon for us, for me at least. Hey, I'm over here. I'm working on the presentation. And what do you think about this? And I'm like, dude, it's Friday. What are you talking about? What, what are you doing? Working on a Friday, you know, and essentially if you can take that time, the time freedom that you're working to create for yourself and be the, and make sure that your team and other people know, like you're not reaching me on a Friday. It's, it's a protected day. It's my day. It's my time. It's no different than sometimes people feel guilty about reaching out to people on a Saturday or Sunday, make that same philosophy on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? Like I work a three day week. And if that's what you do and you tell yourself that's what you're going to do. And then you maximize your days that you're working. It's your business. This is the thing is your business. You can build it to be what you want it to be. And if you want to work seven days a week, I think you'll get burnt out and tired, but that's on you. I I'd rather enjoy my time and enjoy my life. Yeah. You know, that, that brings me to a, a, a different, but related point, Scott Todd. And, you know, we were at a mastermind and, and the guy brought that up in the mastermind. Um, sort of a, in a roundabout way was consistency. So most people are consistently inconsistent. So, and Eric and I were actually talking about it this weekend, where if we get a Voxer, let's say, we consistently, once we listen to the Voxer, we consistently get back right away, right? Consistently. Um, but there's other people that consistently don't get back right away to the Voxer. And that's okay too. What we don't like and what most people do, 80% of people is they're consistently inconsistent. Sometimes they get right back to you right away. And then sometimes they wait two days and you don't know what's going on. So you almost have to choose in certain ways of communicating, whether it's Slack or email or Voxer, are you gonna be, how are you gonna be consistent? Are you going to be the type of person that trains your team? Look, I'm not going to get back to you for probably 48 hours if I get back to you this week, right? I'm going to be inconsistent with it. Or am, are you going to be like Johnny on the spot with it? And within you know hours, you're going to respond. But either way, you want to be mindful of how you're responding to your team. And um, that's one of the things I'm working on uh, as well. So uh, which leads me to my morning routine or my, my productivity routine. And I, I have to say that I'm, I am inconsistent. My routine is constantly changing. Um, so, you know, I was very consistent with the Peloton. Now I'm off that wagon. I was very consistent with TRX. Now I'm off that wagon. Um, you know, I was very consistent with my morning meditation for an hour. I'm not doing that now. Um, what I am doing right now is I'm spending about 20 minutes before I go to bed looking at the next day and trying to have as little decision fatigue as, as much as possible for that themed day. So even on Mondays and Fridays where I, I don't want to have any meetings, I want to have a totally clean calendar, do whatever I want to do, I want to know, okay, but what am I going to do that day? So am I going to read? Am I going to work out? Am I going to, you know, call Scott Todd or Mike Zeno and complain about, you know, the latest Ted Lasso episode? Because, you know, the beard episode was controversial, let's be honest, right? But I want to have that in my calendar so I know at 11 a.m. I'm doing this because I've been thinking about it earlier. Which book am I going to read and for how long? When am I going to take my long walk? So I want all that in my calendar. Now there's flexibility in there, but I want to have my day scheduled the night before. So when my day hits, there's as little decision fatigue as possible. So in fact, once we're done with this podcast, I know exactly the very next thing I'm going to do and I've allotted time for that. So that's the sort of my latest routine, but typically my ideal routine at some point in the day is going to include certainly a workout, whether it's a long walk, 
whether it's something more intense, um, which might be, you know, body weight exercises. Uh, I just joined a stretch lab. So maybe I'm doing that twice a week now. Um, I know. Don't judge Scott Todd. I saw that look. It's, What's it's, a stretch lab? It, they stretch you out like a professional athlete. It feels pretty good. Oh, wow. Anyways, huh. um, I do want to get back into my meditation. Um, and certainly, uh, you know, like Wim Hof breathing, I like to do as well. So, but I, you know, I, I noticed that I go through phases where I'll read something and I'll try it and then, but I, I can't do everything. So I have to pick and choose what's going to be best for me, but I am the kind of person that likes to experiment and just try these different things and see what sticks and then forgive myself for investing in a Peloton that I'm not using, but then I'm going to get back into it. But you know, my next investment will be the tonal. And then I'm sure that will last about three months and I'll regret that investment as well. But either way, I want to try it. So I thought this was a really good podcast. Uh, before we go to the tip of the week, I want to remind the listeners that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can be transformative for you. Start building your passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Once your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you have total freedom. And the only way to get there is to start. How do you start? Well, you go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen Master or the Nightcap OG and learn more. I will tell you that flight school investment is most likely going to be the best investment you've ever made in your life. And the great thing about it is the tuition investment ain't gonna cost nothing. Guaranteed, you're gonna make it back 180 days or less. You have nothing to lose. So make the call, learn more, landgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, tip of the week. Mark, what do you got? Well, thanks, Mark. This week, I have an amazing tip. Um, and for the longest time, I never took really my office space seriously. Um, I wrote about it in Mighty Networks that I figured out why I was like that, but that's sort of irrelevant for this conversation. I will say having a, uh, a clean, inviting workspace makes all the difference. I can't wait to get to my office where before in the garage Mahal, there's no windows. It was cluttered. It was messy. Um, I would be more likely to procrastinate getting into the office. And now I can't wait to work. I've got the uplift desk. It goes up, it goes down. I've got a nice chair. I have amazing lighting. I've got the two 27 inch monitors. If you want to learn more, um, just email Eric about how to get a, a, a perfect setup, but it's amazing. Um, and, uh, that is my tip of the week is take a look, a good hard look at your workspace. Don't be afraid to invest in it like me, because you will make a 10 X return on that investment because you will work more and you will work more in a more focused manner in a more productive manner. Um, it's a great investment to make. That's my tip of the week. So any uh, harsh comments, Scott Todd? Uh, none. What a what a relief that is, Scott Bossman. No harsh comments. No, no. Of course, you're not going to get one from Bossman. Come on, Eric. Eric's neutral. Zano's neutral. He Marcus. Might, might as well just <laughs> might as well just kill it. And in the podcast here, Mark, just saying. What do you mean? <laughs> You're not going to get any pushback from the others. They're all on your side. They're all they're, neutral. They're not all neutral. Not at all. I, I think that. Telling you, just telling you. I think it's just a right. reaction to your wait till, sledgehammer. Wait till Big approach. Papa comes back. Wait till Big Papa comes back. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Taria and, and Tate do not suffer bad tips of the week at all. Yeah. It's yeah. true. All right. Well, um, are we ready to do this? Mark, one question. Are you still drinking no coffee? I'm curious. If, if no you've coffee, back. no alcohol. Eric will attest to this. No sugar 
for the most oh. part, unless it's okay. really worth it. I'm not going to have sugar. What's worth it? Well, if it's like a homemade dessert or something like that, you know, if it's something like a friend baked, then yeah, of course I'm going to have it. Um, but, you know, typically, am I going to eat Skittles? No. Or, you know, I don't know, a Krispy Kreme donut, for, for example? No. Do, do you have something against donuts? I love a good homemade non franchised, you know, donut, non process. <laughs> for sure. Is everybody picking on Scott today? Come on. <sighs> It's okay. It's okay. It's all I good. only it's asked good. if you like donuts. It's not picking on anybody. I, 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 a neutral comment. I do prefer the, the Whole Foods gluten-free donut if I was going to have one, but I, I rarely do. Is that really a donut? Round, anyway. It has a hole in the middle. It is. Yeah. So do lifesavers. <laughs> so do tires. Okay, this is devolving quickly. It really is. All right, you guys ready? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Not bad. Eat your donut. Go eat your donut. Is, is anybody watching uh, season 11 of Curb? Yes. You are watching it. I love that show. <laughs> it, I, I, yeah, it's so it, it's. I feel like I want to channel it. I went to the local Mexican restaurant. I go there. Incredible food. However, the top layer of chips are all whole. Once you take the top layer off, every time they're all broken underneath. I was told Laura, like I'm going to channel my inner Larry David. Like this is a problem. Why do the top layer all have? And then as soon as you move the top layer, you have, you can't dip little segments of chips. It's it's inappropriate. I, I'm. I'm trying not to be Larry David about it, but I want to approach them and let them know this is a real issue. I think you should. I, I think the world's a better place when we are a little bit more fastidious and speak up about these things. Like I love the episode where they have the two people in the middle of the table at a dinner party having inane, insipid conversation. And then Susie's like, okay, you two move. This is not working. Larry, you go in the middle, you know, and then they have Vince Vaughn. You guys are middle. You guys are the middle of the table. And then all of a sudden, Larry brings up a great conversation topic. And it's like lively. And like, he saves the dinner party. And then, you know, the next dinner party, they're all inviting Larry over. He's like, no, 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 I don't, I don't feel like middling. And then no one wants to sit in the middle. <laughs> I, I can't wait for the next live boot camp so we can see, A, are we sitting in the ugly section or the a good looking section? And B, are any of us taking more of our lauded appetizer? I'm going to watch this very closely at the next Bly boot camp. It's a good point. It's a good point. And then is anybody a low talker? You, you know, but Scott, Scott is, look at the, look at the look. If you're not going to start watching the video, <laughs> Scott Todd. I, I just have no words. What would yeah, you do, nothing. Scott, if you went for that morning donut and it was not properly shaped. It was maybe a little squished. If there was something, would you tell them? Okay. Uh, okay, Mike. Like, I mean, I, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk when I say this, but, you know, here's what happened. I go to this place. It's, it's a major grocery store. Okay. I, I go to this place for the donut. Uh, I don't get the Krispy Kreme anymore. I go to this grocery store. I prefer their donut better. And I go there, I don't know, like back in September and they have no donuts, like none in their bakery. They have no donuts. And I'm like, well, where wow. are the donuts? They're like, we don't have any. I'm like, how do you not have donuts? I don't understand. And they tell me that their supplier isn't producing them. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. These are made in the store, right? Yes, but the ingredients that we use come from this one supplier and they can't get it. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So in the entire world, there's only one supplier of this ingredient that you use. They're like, no. And I'm like, but yet we don't have donuts because this one supplier doesn't have the donuts? Surely that there's more than one supplier of donut material. 
And the, the manager's like, well, there is, but we don't have, uh, they're working to fix it. And I said, okay, okay. So I go back the next day, no donuts. And I'm like, where's the donut? She's like, we don't have any again. And I'm like, well, when? She's like, it could be 30 days. 30 days to go without a donut? Are you kidding me? You're killing the business here. So I mean, it's I a grocery store. Don't they have the ingredients to make That's a donut? That's what I'm saying. That's what, what I is this understand. magic ingredient? This is a problem. Like, go get it off the shelf and make it. I don't understand what the problem is. Make the donuts, people. If Duncan can do it, you can do it. Trust me. You got all the stuff back there. So I mean, I'm talking jokingly to the manager, but it was one of those Larry David moments. Like, this is a problem. No donuts. Like, you, the, you know how much money you're losing because you don't have donuts. So that I could see like you. I could see you walking now. in every morning and meeting the manager. Do you guys have donuts? We do not. Donut. Um, well, donut I mean, I do. Donuts. I walk in and they see donut, me coming donut. down. I'm walking in. They see me coming down to the, the bakery aisle and they're like, here he they comes. The wave and they get the donut out of the case for me. And I get down there. They're putting it away for me. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day. So, you know, like imagine if you went there on your morning routine and you're like, where, where the where the donuts? What happened? Right. Yeah, I mean, that would be if, frustrating. if I felt like I could, you know, save humanity by voicing a problem, I think I would do it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right, I'm going to tell them the chips are cracked. It's not happening. Do it, do it, Mike. And if if you need backup, I'll come up there. All right. Don't make my donut guy fly in because you won't like what he has to say. Yeah, there's this guy that when I when he has to fly into town, it's no good. Okay. Yeah, which which leads us to the beginning of the podcast where everyone needs to get scuba certified. Because Key Largo, which is very close to Scott Todd, is some great diving. Tate's good is certified, Eric's certified, I'm certified. I, I'm not I'm not putting on some mask and go 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 hang with the sharks. No way. Not it's doing not, that. They're not sharks, they're reef yeah, sharks. I'm out. When it comes to sharks, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Hard no. I don't know, man. I know this lady. I know this lady. I kid you not. I know this lady. Her daughter was in the Keys and her daughter jumped in off of a boat to go scuba diving and basically jumped in and a shark bit her arm. Okay. She had to get airlifted out. Now, I don't know the person whose arm was bitten, but I know the the mom of the person I did. And for that reason, you can go shark diving. Okay. Now, now this is the same guy that goes up in a private plane. Yeah. There's, there's no air sharks. There's no air sharks. There's no sharks on the plane, brother. It, it, How about snakes? Snakes? Snakes on the no plane? Snakes on the plane either. <laughs> nope. Dogs? Dogs? There might be a few dogs on the plane. That's right. Yeah. I mean, there, it's riskier in your backyard than it is in the ocean. You can get an alligator attacking you more likely than a shark. No way. Absolutely. No way. What, what is Samuel Jackson doing on my plane? <laughs> yeah. Then why is he holding snakes? If I, look over, problem. if I look over at the passenger seat and I see Samuel Jackson, I'm getting off. That's it. <laughs> Deploy the parachute. <laughs> uh, I feel like well, Bossman or Eric should have the final word on this. What is more risky, scuba diving, Scott's backyard, or flying private? Ooh. Uh, I'm I'm going to say scuba diving. Actually, I think it's a little more risky. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Ah. That's just my opinion. You shifted I, out of neutral. I did shift out of neutral. Yep. Or maybe I'm four wheel drive right now. I'm back to neutral. Let's, let's put it that way. After you my... roll over mock with four-wheel drive. Hold on a second. I need to put on my calendar, call Bossman after this. Let me just have a good time. <laughs> uh, Eric, you want the final word? No comment. Okay. I'll tell you what, Mark. Mark, why don't we do this? Why don't we... Um, why don't we ask the insurance company, the life insurance company, well, they know. They rate, which one that they would rate? We could go to the to the uh, to the people that figure this stuff out, right? 
That is good. What's riskier? I'm going to just go to the Googles. Flying private or scuba diving. The insurance people would know. You're right. Uh, look at this. Chess in the air. The risk of dying doing what we love. Scuba diving. Uh, let's see. Okay, climbing the Tetons and especially Mount Everest is actually much more dangerous than people think. So generally safe activities are driving, cycling, and resort skiing. Somewhat dangerous are back country skiing, open water swimming, equestrian, eventing, marathon running, dangerous activities, scuba diving, one death in 120,000 hours, 14 years, death in the next thousand hours, it was 0.8%, 83 times as dangerous as, as commercial aviation. Wow. General oh. aviation, one death in 64,000 hours, seven years. Death in the next thousand hours, 1.6%, 156 times as dangerous as commercial aviation. General aviation then is more dangerous. Hang gliding, one death in 40,000 hours every five years. Death in the next thousand hours, two and a half percent. 250 times as dangerous as commercial aviation. Downhill mountain biking, one death in 35,000 hours. This is good to know, Tate Litchfield. Four years, death in the next thousand hours, 2.9%. 286 is dangerous, times as dangerous as commercial aviation. Skydiving, one death in 18,000 hours every two years. Death in the next, uh, next thousand hours, 5.6%. 556 times as dangerous as commercial aviation. Paragliding, one death in 35,000 hours, four years. Uh, flying sailplanes, Germany, France, one death in 50,000 hours, six, six years. So the most dangerous are skydiving and paragliding, downhill, mountain biking, hang gliding, flying sailplanes, uh, and then the least yeah. dangerous are going to be sc scuba diving, motorcycling, general aviation. The most dangerous activities, climbing the Tetons, Formula One car racing, summoning Mount Everest. Insanely dangerous activities, base jumping, one death in 21 hours. Death in the next thousand hours is greater than 99%, 480,000 wow. times as dangerous as commercial aviation. See, aren't we glad we brought this up? I think you missed something. What about making Scott Todd angry? Where does that fall on the list? That actually. Um, one in every one hour? <laughs> that, that actually went into uh, insanely dangerous activities with an asterisk. Um, so, so my, so my two million times more dangerous. Therefore, than, therefore, you tell your your uh, Mexican Russian guy, don't make this guy angry. So, yeah, don't make him. Don't make me fly in this guy. Look at the chat; he's one for one, one hour, one death. Don't make me call him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It's good. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna go have a delicious smoothie, which Eric knows mm -hmm. all about. So indeed. See you guys next week. Thanks everybody. Take care. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.